Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody's having a really great day. I hope you had a really great week. And yes, I am drinking a cup of coffee on this very cold morning. I think I greet you probably 99% of the time right here with my cup of coffee saying good morning. But yeah, it's a good way to start the day, isn't it? Just to be able to hear the words, good morning. And so anyways, yes, today is a cold day. It's a cold, snowy day. And I just wanted to say hello. And I really hope that you had a blessed week. And today what I want to do is I want to make a dinner for two. Something that is for, yeah, the empty nesters or the, you know, not yet having children stage. And that is just, yeah, something very easy, very quick, and you don't even need a loaf pan. Yeah, think of that. The only thing you're going to cook it on is a baking sheet. So, yeah, I'm going to get that kind of stuff ready here in just a little bit. But, yeah, do you remember when uh on, on tuesday's video how i was talking to you about just needing to get my mind set in the right course to do what needs to be done even when it's really not what i feel like doing yeah well i think that for the most part i've done pretty well this week one of the things that I did yesterday is I defrosted our freezer. Um, we really needed to get it defrosted. It had been a long time and I took advantage of the extremely cold weather so that I could just put what was in the freezer into um, some ice chests and set them outside because yeah, it's that cold. So anyways, that's what I did and I got that all defrosted and oh my goodness, it just, you know, sometimes you just need to do some things to feel a little bit better. You know, there's nothing like having the sense that you've accomplished something that needed to be done that's was a little, maybe a little bit neglected. Yeah, but I also wanted to say that I, since um, all week long, I, I really did. I did a lot better. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of grace and say, yeah little steps at a time, right? That's how we progress. No one progresses in leaps and bounds. At least I don't. I usually have to take one step at a time. And yeah, so one step, everything that you do that needs to be done, just that one or two things is one or two things less that you need to do. Anyways, yeah, not much else is going on around here other than I want to make those meatloaves for you and, uh, yeah, I, it was funny. I saw this bunny out there today, let me tell you. I was standing here at the kitchen window. And, well, actually my husband and I were standing here at the kitchen window and there was a rabbit, a big rabbit, standing out, or I should say, sitting out by the bush by our shed. And that poor little thing was trying to find something to eat, rooting around in the snow. Remember, I told you, we have like a foot of snow. And I just felt so awful for that poor little rabbit. I mean, you know, he's eaten twigs. Yeah, he found some twigs. So I don't know much about rabbits, but I kind of felt sorry for him, you know. Like Psalm 150 says. Sorry, I'm going to set you up here because I wanted to quote that verse to you. And it's right in front of me. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And yeah, I guess even rabbits have breath. I'll probably kick myself in the summertime when the thing wants to, you know, root through my vegetable garden. But yeah, it just kind of reminded me of the story of Peter Rabbit. What can I say? Yeah. But what I did is I took some little baby carrots. I cut them in half. And then I took some of the, the leaves of the tops of my celery and uh, put it out there where I know he lives under the shed. He has like a little little hole type thing that he's dug out of the dirt so he can get out from underneath there and uh i just kind of shoved it in there so yeah i think he i think i think he's feasting right now but yeah what can i say yeah i'm pathetic i know 
But anyways, I'll get my stuff together and yeah, I'll talk to y'all in just a little bit. Okay, now to start our meal, because I am making an entire meal, is I got approximately seven or eight of these little tiny potatoes and I'm just going to chop them into wedges and we are going to place them on a baking sheet. And yeah, well, why don't I just pan you down and you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just cutting the potatoes in half and then making wedges out of them. Out of them. And I just lost one on the floor. And I found the one that I lost on the floor, went and cleaned it off. So yeah, what can I say? Now some of these might be so small that you're just going to cut them in half and just, you know, do what you like. But we're just going to put these on, on a baking sheet. And we're going to drizzle them with some oil. And put a little bit of salt and pepper on them. And we're going to put this in a 425 degree oven that I forgot to tell you we needed to preheat and this is going to take about 20 to 25 minutes okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grade this um, garlic just one clove is all we need so the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to chop up a shallot but shallots tend to come in like two pieces after you peel it so we're going to take the larger half we're just going to chop up and then we're going to take our chopped onion here and just place in with our meat. Now what I have in here for my beef is I have about um, 10 to 12 ounces so you just you know use this amount of beef that you're going to want to divide in two for two little meatloaves is what I guess I want to say. Now for this other half what we're going to do is we're going to mince this. were watering so bad I had to actually turn the camera off whoa okay so I have my garlic I have my minced onion I have my chopped onion and I have some of my thyme here that I've taken the leaves off of the stems and so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the garlic and about a quarter of a cup of the panko or the breadcrumbs, whichever one you prefer, and some salt and pepper. And yeah, you're probably gonna wanna use at least a teaspoon of salt. And we're just going to combine this. We're also gonna add about half of this time. Once it's all combined, we're going to divide this into two meatloaves and place on our baking sheet. Two little mini meatloaves, just like that. So now what I'm going to do is I have these nice fresh green beans and I'm just going to place them on the baking sheet right next to them. Give it a little drizzle of oil, some salt and pepper, and now we are going to put this in the oven with the potatoes that have been cooking. I forgot to mention that we were to brush the tops of those meatloaves with some ketchup. 
that's just preference if you like it that way. But I thought I would insert that in there because as soon as I shut that door, I realized oh, I didn't put the ketchup on. <laughs> so I went back and did that then. But what we're going to do now is we're going to make a sauce for on top of the meatloaves when they're cooked. So yeah, let me show you how to do that. Now the first thing I'm going to do, whoop, wrong burner, is I'm going to put about a tablespoon of butter into the pan and kind of get it a little hot, uh, kind of over medium heat. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to add that minced shallot that we had and the remaining of our thyme. This is only going to take approximately three to four minutes, maybe not even that long because I kind of had my pan a little hot there. So what I have here is about a tablespoon of flour. I'm going to whisk that in. I had to go find my whisk. It wasn't where I normally keep it. And we're going to add approximately um, a tablespoon of some stock concentrate. and a half a cup of water. And whisking all that together real well. And this is going to take approximately three to four minutes to, to bring to a simmer and just allow it to thicken. We're also gonna add some salt and pepper to this. And once this is thickened, like I said, it's only going to take three, four, five minutes at tops. Just going to turn it off and just leave it in the pan until everything else is done. Once it's done, yeah, we're just going to take it out off the oven and put it on our plates. And this cream sauce goes over the meatloaf. So yeah, I'll show you that as soon as it's done. Okay, so... Everything is done, and we're just going to take our potatoes here and divide them between the two plates. And then we're going to take the green beans. I wish I would have had more green beans, but this was all I had. Or I would have made more. And then we'll take our little mini meat loaves. And I'm just going to cut them in. In, in slices, basically what I'm going to do here, so that I can take this sauce and just kind of put it over it. And there's our dinner. And I'll do the same thing to this. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will talk to all of you in just a little bit. titled Signs of the End Times, Persecution. And today's devotion is based on a devotion from right from the heart ministries. Our scripture verse for today is Matthew 24 verses 9 and 10. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Now, the book of Acts gives a very apt description of the early church and the difficulties that they faced as Christians taking the gospel to others in a hostile world. They were beaten, arrested, martyred, left for dead, and despised. But they were not deterred and they were not stopped. Jesus's living and last word was that he had authority over all things. Upon his authority, they were to take the message of his saving power to every culture. They were not just to be faithful, 
but they were to teach new disciples to be obedient and faithful, no matter what they faced, no matter what happened. They were to remember that he was with them. In the days when Christians are being persecuted simply for being Christians, and so many in the Christian movement are sidetracked by sin, worldliness, and fear of offending someone else's sensibilities, Jesus' words are a sobering reminder that Satan will do anything that he can to shut God's people up so that the world will remain in darkness. But our heritage is a heritage of good news for all peoples, against all odds, and overcoming at all costs. In today's scripture, where Jesus is talking about the signs of the times and the end of the age, what will the end times look like and when will it happen? Well, Jesus answered these questions by highlighting certain signs which will point to his second coming. One such sign is an increase in persecution towards believers. And we know that Jesus' disciples would go on to face severe persecution for preaching the gospel, and all but one would be martyred for their faith. But persecution did not end in the first century. Christians have been persecuted to the point of death around the world ever since. In fact, scholars believe that more Christians were martyred in the 20th century than all the previous centuries combined. That's a sobering thought. So how does the Christian, whose life isn't often on the line for their beliefs, respond when ridiculed or rejected for their faith? First, don't take it personally. It's not you they hate, but Jesus. Second, remember that it's a sign of the times. Persecution is only going to increase as we move closer towards Jesus' second coming. And third, pray for the church to remain strong in their faith, to be a faithful witness. Persecution is the number one prayer request from the globally persecuted church to the Western Christian churches. Increased persecution is another sign that we are living in the end times. Here in the United States, we see persecution beginning to mount. And notice that it's a pattern that is reminiscent of Jewish persecution in pre-war Germany. First, the people were mocked and ridiculed, and then there was discrimination against a certain group of people, the Jews in that day. And the discrimination was socially acceptable. And then the prejudice turns to hatred. The propaganda machine begins to crank up more and more, and finally it results in outright persecution. Virtually anything today that is rooted in basic Christian beliefs is now considered ridiculous at best and a hate crime at its worst. We see this especially in the relentless attack on Christianity in our country. Historically, persecution and suffering have always been God's method of purification. The writer of Hebrews warned in chapter 3, verse 12, Take care, brethren, lest there should be any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart in falling away from the living God. I realize that a, pot, a lot of people would say, That's not me. I would never fall away. Well, I want to ask you a question. To what extent are you willing today to take a stand for Christ? How easy is it for you to start clearing your throat, then backing away and changing the subject when it's time to stand up for Christ at your job 
or at the hairdressers or when you're sitting across from some friends at a restaurant. The unfortunate truth is if you're a coward in these simple, easy scenarios, think what a coward you would be when your very life is at stake. I know that these words may seem harsh, but I say them in Christian love. God bless, and may the Holy Spirit open your eyes to see. Mm -hmm.